Namaste. In the stories related to Saturn, everyone did bad for him. Everyone misunderstood him. And everyone used him for their own ulterior motives. This seems to be true today also, where astrologers are completely misusing the information related to Saturn for making money and making their clients afraid. As someone who only wishes to disseminate knowledge through his courses, consultations, and uh, this YouTube channel, and I can proudly say not into any bad business of selling gemstones, selling liquidative pujas, or making myself uh, feel as someone who can, you know, like take you out of your past life karmas and then doing the, the business of, oh, no, no, I don't look at horoscopes, etc. I'm not doing anything as such. Being the one who is really concerned with the betterment of astrology today, I am going to talk about Saturn. According to a website, generally accepted rule, Saturn over moon, Saturn in second house to moon, Saturn in 12th house to moon is Sade Dharma. This is true. Saturn in 8th to moon is Kantakshani. Okay. Saturn in 4th to moon, 7th to moon and 10th to moon is Laghu Kalyani Daya. As per our website, this information related to Daya is as per our website. So basically, Saturn is bad in 7 out of 12 houses, giving a lot of money to astrologers in the name of Puja and Genstrophs. However, this is not true. First of all, the first and the foremost thing that you need to understand is transit is not the prime tool to predict about timing of events. Transit is the tool which should be used at last. This is the most inferior tool of timing. Transit is same for the complete world. I teach this to my students, the Shavida course specifically where I deal with it. Transit deals with the whole world. So basically, transit primarily deals with the changes that is happening in the time, the changes that is happening in the society, the changes that is happening in the environment, and have little to very less say on what is happening in the personal life of the day. Then over time, because transit is easy to remember, always of, of, all, like 80% of the astrologers always remember the transit that is going at a current point of time. They can quickly look at a horoscope and predict things using transits. Transit has gained much importance. But, and then, you know, the, uh, the arise of new rules, etc. also happened in transits, which make it quite dependable for timing events. But the prime thing is, it is not the prime tool to time events. The prime tool to time event is the Dasha only. And first of all, you find the promise in the horoscope. Then you apply Dasha over it. Then over Dasha, you should, like there are many types of Dasha. And only after the application of Dashas, you should use transit. Coming to the transit of the planets, because Saturn is the slowest moving one, he transits a sign for a longer duration, that is around two and a half years, giving it a dependability regarding the prediction of results. Compare this to Moon, who transits every Rashi term times and year. Predicting an event with the help of the transit of Moon is quite difficult and is more based on assumptions and probability rather than based on astrology. Now, this particular transit of Saturn, what you should understand, there is one particular point that we need to understand. There is a particular combination in a horoscope. There are many combinations in the horoscope and they get activated over time. Now, the duty to activate those combinations are generally borne by planets. The basic rule of prediction is whatever result is promised by a planet is disseminated by the planet. This dissemination happens through Dasha. Dasha Antra Dasha. Coming to transit, if there is a combination made by Moon and uh, Mars, you say, or Moon or Mercury, these are fast moving planets. Now the results have to be disseminated by them only. And because they are fast moving, they will keep on activating that combination again and again. So certainly the normal result. For example, Moon and Mars connection makes one drunkard. So doing activities which are not desirable 
or respectable after drinking alcohol may happen very often once a once a month it can happen or four times a month one over moon over mars and three under the aspects of mars moon will go and if this combination is present in the horoscope four such incidents per month is very common but predicting a bigger result based on the moon mars combination that is the uh, that is the financial betterment this is also known as lakshmi yoga the financial betterment or the good professional life cannot be so easily predicted with it so what uh, we have done what the astrologers have done is they have taken the transit of saturn to say when saturn transits over this particular combination this will get activated this is very partially true because saturn being the significator of karma whichever house it goes into whichever planet it aspects he tends to activate that planet this is the dasha antara dasha sorry this is the uh, transit activation this is the first point that needs to be understood the above mentioned website which i was talking about is wrong because in the uh, kantakshani part he takes the placement of shani in the 10th house to be kantakshani also however as i have told in the previous video itself saturn is good in the 3rd 6th 10th and 11th house so certainly because saturn is good in these houses saturn transiting through these houses is also very good in auspicious specifically people are highly traded of uh, this sade sati that you should not be afraid of because many people have gained power success and many things many good things many positive and auspicious things while they were going through sade so there is nothing to worry about it <clears throat> the first most important rule and the first most important principle that you need to understand is saturn being the karaka of karma being the karma karak activates the planet and the house where he is transiting through so say for an example moon is situated in the ninth house when it will be the last leg of sade sati uh, saturn will be in the 10th house this will be not bad because 10th house is a good house saturn is appreciated here. same condition moon is situated in the 11th house the first part of sade sati and even the second part of sade sati saturn will be in the 10th house or in the 11th house both of these positions are good for saturn hence one should not be afraid of another particular point to take 12th from moon is a combination between mercury and uh, say it is a say this is a gemini ascendant 12th from moon is a combination of uh, venus and mercury gemini ascendant it is a connection between lagna lord fourth lord and fifth lord and 12th lord combination between lagna lord fifth lord is good gives intelligence and power and combination between fourth lord and fifth lord is the rajyog that also gives name fame status power ease of life etc now because this combination is happening in 12th to saturn uh, so in 12th to moon when saturn transits 12th to moon it will do be a sare sati but because saturn being the karaka for karma that you are going to undergo is going over a combination which is a good combination this first leg of sare sati will not be bad but it will be good the only point that i am making here is you have to holistically look at the horoscope and the combinations that the saturn is activating and you cannot label it as deadly okay this is the first point of it the second point specifically saturn transiting in 12th to moon and if you listen to me you have to decide the stronger one between moon and the ascendant to decide that the simple one will be to do the simple thing to do will be to compare the strength of the lagna lord and the lord of the sign where moon is situated in exaltation retrogression is the highest strength followed by planet in mood trigona followed by planet in own rashi followed by planet that is varbottam followed by planet that is in a friendly sign followed by a planet that is in an inimical sign and lastly the planet which is debilitated and the least powerful planet is the planet who is thumbus right so decide the stronger between moon and ascendant first and whoever is powerful the transit have to be seen from the same so if moon is weak looking at the transit from moon is of no purpose the transit should be looked at from the ascendant 
Whereas when the ascendant is weak, to look at the transit from the ascendant is of no purpose, and one should look at it from the moon. Right? Should do it accordingly. Regarding the transit, Abhilasha has made a few videos on transit of Jupiter and Saturn, as far as I remember, and she has revealed a lot of techniques there. Specifically, the Navamsha based technique in both the videos, which should be followed, which should be very strongly followed, and that is the like more better if you do that, right? So please uh, watch those videos. I will uh, drop a link of those two videos in the description section of this part, the description section of this particular video. Okay, coming back to the point again, Saturn transiting to the twelfth. Is quite devastating because uh, Saturn will be in the 12th house and the third aspect of Saturn will be over the second house. So basically the planet in the first house will be hemmed in between malefic influence. This creates a problem. This will be known as the Bandhan Yoga. And the person can be into a difficult situation where he is binded where he is in bondage in what he can do, what he can achieve, the results that his hard work, the result that his undertakings give him. And in all the areas, profession, success, progress, he is quite limited. This is a difficult factor. Specifically when this happens from moon, because moon is the significator of mind, wealth and many more things. It leads one to depressive tendencies, negative thinking, not thinking properly before taking an action and puts person into financial troubles and specifically loss of money, less procurement of money and losses. So this should be very carefully judged and regarding all the other houses, whichever we have discussed about up to this extent, one have to carefully judge the combination that the Saturn is activating and one should not blindly predict that this is a sare sati and this is going to be bad only. This should be very, very clearly understood. Now coming to another aspect of it. There are many type of strengths that a planet can acquire in a horoscope. For the matter of transit, Ashtagavaraga is something that is highly recommended to be used. Now in Ashtagavaraga, we have we have done two videos on Ashtagavaraga that is available on the channel also. In Ashtagavaraga, because we are talking about Saturn, we have to check the Saturn of Ashtagavaraga for a particular horoscope. In the Ashtagavaraga, houses having four points are medium, okay, okay. More than four point is good, less than four point is bad. Lesser than the, you know, zero point is pathetic. One point is very, very bad. Two point is very bad, three point is bad, four point is okay, okay, five point is good, six is very good, seven is excellent, eight point is brilliant. Aha, very good. Transit should essentially be seen with respect to Dasha. Sorry, transits should specifically be seen with respect to Ashtagvara. Because we are talking of Sane Sati and we are talking of Moon getting influenced by Saturn or the ascendant getting influenced by Saturn. There are two astragavargas that needs to be seen, the astragavarga of Moon and the astragavarga of Saturn itself. Saturn transiting in that house having four or more than four points in his own astragavarga, transit of Saturn will be good only, nothing to fear about it. If the points are less than four, then you should be careful about it. Now, in the same condition, you also check the Ashtagvarga of Moon. And if the Rashi where Moon is transiting uh, in the Ashtagvarga of Moon, the Rashi where Saturn is transiting in, if that Rashi is having four or more than four points, the, in, the transit of Saturn on that house will have a huge impact on Moon. This, when coupled with Sane Sati, can lead one into mental tension and loss of wealth, etc., which I have already predicted. However, in that case where uh, the Rashi where Saturn is transiting is having good point in the Ashtagvarga of Saturn, but bad point in the Ashtagvarga of Moon, the Sane Sati is good and brilliant, leaving no malefic influence on the mind and other significations of Moon, whereas 
general also the transit of saturn is very very good the trains the same treatment should be given to kantakshini and ashtamshini also other than that sare sati or whatever is a very normal transit saturn remains in a sign for 2 and 1/2 year so 12th house he will remain in 2 and 1/2 year then he will go to ascendant for 2 and 1/2 more year then he will go to the second house for 2 and 1/2 more years a total of it will be 7 and 1/2 years that is known as sare sati now if sat what is special with saturn saturn is a malefic so in that scenario sun will also go into the 12th house from moon go over moon in second house from moon and sun is also malefic that will be there for 3 months so that should be told as you know like sare sati that will that should be told something 3 etc that's 3 same will happen with mars mars will remain in the 12th house from moon for 84 days over moon for 84 days and second to moon for 84 days so it is 84 plus 3 plus 84 and this is also number of months right 84 multiplied by 3 divided by 30 this is 8.4 months this is 9 months so sare nova this should also be called huh? this we don't do and so this is nothing as such any planet when it is influenced by a malefic planet some significations of that planet will be lost and deteriorated because of that particular malefic influence that all depends on the combinations etc as well right why should saturn activate a particular planet because he is the karma karta he is the karga for karma the things that you are going to go through looking at saturn from the perspective of saturn being karma karta makes him not detrimental at all to cause sare sare If you say Saturn is the karga for misery, isolation, jail, etc., etc., the malefic significations of Saturn, and he transiting in second, twelfth, or the same house over Moon will cause sare sati. Then in that particular scenario, Mars is also the karga for accident, and Sun is also the karga for loss of power. It should also be considered that, All right? So this is more of a hoax that is created by those astrologers who are not competent enough to read the Shant or the Shant divisional charts and all these things. Right, and because they cannot do these things properly, they have to make things like sare sati etc. much popular. Right, so this is don't fall into this particular trap. But the issue with this world is, you know, as a great philosopher said, that only fools think we are not fools. Only those think we are smart, so smart, are the only ones who get deceived. This is the irony of the world. I think some Plato, Aristotle, someone said it. Ah. as i have read over internet okay this should be very clearly understood right sare sati or any combination for that matter is not to be dreaded of it is like saying saturn dasha is always that certainly in the dasha antar dasha of the planet the results related to the natural signification of planet also come to pass so the dasha antar dasha of saturn giving you disease laziness things getting struck some depression some isolation some misery is very common because that is the natural signification of saturn but this signification doesn't make it make it extremely bad right so some when saturn is good in the horoscope placed in a good rashi placed in a good house having educated strength and also placed in a good navamsha saturn also gives you very very good results this go without any saying coming to the conjunction e Gen traditionally, fourth house Saturn transiting in the fourth house from Moon is taken as conjunction. What I have told Moon versus Ascendant, don't forget that. This probably is because of the reason because when Saturn is transiting in the fourth house from Moon, his tenth aspect will be over Moon. When Saturn is transiting in the eleventh house, his third aspect will also be over Moon. But because um, it is Saturn transiting in the eleventh house where all the planets are taken as very beneficial. it is not considered into conjunction now when saturn will be situated in the seventh house he will put his seventh aspect over moon or the ascendant whatever be the case in that particular scenario because saturn is influencing the moon it is called as conjunction but one should understand that mars jupiter and saturn these planets were extra aspects over the seventh aspect for them the seventh aspect is not primary 
Hence, Saturn transiting in seventh to moon can only come with some mental disappointments or some depression, overthinking, etc. Overthinking, lot of pressure, people trying to disturb you, people trying to harm you, people getting jealous of you. These things, these day-to-day -day things, which are very common with every individual, right, and is not something very specific. Or something which should be very afraid of. This is not an alien thing that only happens with a few people. Is the maximum that can be predicted, and it should not be dreaded. Saturn going to the fourth house because fourth house is the house of happiness, and Saturn is certainly a cause of misery and disappointments. Is somehow we have to like seriously take it. Is specifically also because he is having his tenth aspect over the moon. But the tenth aspect of Saturn is least powerful as compared to the third aspect of Saturn. The third aspect of Saturn over Moon should not be Moon or Ascendant should not be considered dreaded because in that particular scenario Saturn will be in the eleventh house, and that is considered a good placement. So the basic point is the transit of Saturn over the fourth house is more deadly as compared to the tenth aspect of Saturn over Moon, right? So in this scenario, you should more be worried about Saturn transiting over the fourth house, which can have consequences, rather than its influence over the moon or ascendant. Now, Saturn transiting over the fourth house or a planet transiting over any house will only have consequences in two scenarios. First of all, fourth house is already having a bad combination. In that scenario, Saturn being the significator of karma will go to the fourth house and will activate that particular combination, leading you to issues. Another thing is, suppose Saturn himself is afflicted in the horoscope. When Saturn itself is afflicted in the horoscope, he promises disease, denial, misery, and all these things because he is afflicted. So his significations are all uh, so his significations are also afflicted. This should create an issue. In this condition, also Saturn going to the fourth house will majorly activate the bad karma related to Saturn. Right. Yeah, bad karma related to Saturn. So in this case, he should be worried about. But when Saturn is in a good condition in the Rashi chart, when the transit is good and, and when he is activating a good com combination by being the karma karaga, there is nothing to be worried about. Chill, relax, have fun. If you say Saturn transit into the fourth house is bad. Because it tends to destroy the signification of the fourth house Saturn being a naturally malefic planet, then Saturn transit into fifth house should also be considered bad, and Saturn transit to the ninth house should also be considered bad, shouldn't it? It should because these are the good houses, and specifically being the trines, malefics are not welcome there. In trines, one five nine houses, if there are malefics, it is not very good for the house. Certainly, these houses suffer. And in the dasha antar dasha of these malefics, the how the bad results related to these houses, along with bad results related to the signification of the planet, is going to come. Right. So this is the basic fact. But the placement of Saturn into fifth house and ninth house is not taken bad. God know why. You go with the basic point that I have taught you that if Saturn is afflicted, then all the things signified by Saturn in the promise of the horoscope have gone bad. And in that scenario, Saturn will transit any good house. He will take his bad significations to that house, creating issue. Other than that, if there are bad combinations in that house, and Saturn being the karma karaka goes to those houses and activates that bad combination, then also it will be quite. It will be something that you should be quite careful of. Only these things you sh should be worried about. Other than this, if Saturn is activating good combinations and There are good points in that particular house where Saturn is transiting in the Shtakarga of Saturn. There is nothing that you should get worried about. Get worried about. Now coming to the transit of Saturn to the sixth, eighth house. Saturn is the Karaka for death, and it is a commonly accepted rule that Saturn transits eighth house to whichever planet he destroys the result of that planet. This is also true with respect to house. Saturn transits eight from eighth house from whichever house he tends to destroy the bad result of that house. Get it? And this is a widely accepted astrological rule. It is applicable to both planet and house. 
coming to house saturn transiting in any house will be eight to at least one house whereas saturn transiting in any rashi will can or cannot be eight to any planet coming to the so this should be understood when saturn is transiting in the eighth house he is causing destruction to the ascendant because he is eight from the ascendant this is something that one should be worried about because ascendant indicates longevity name fame health status and many more things it is something that you should be worried about but once again if the rashi falling in the eighth house have good point in the astrology of saturn if there are good combinations in the eighth house if saturn is positioned well in the horoscope good placement good namamsha point power for in schedule then also the transit of saturn in the eighth house one should also not worry right but still because saturn in the eighth house tends to destroy the signification of that house and of the planet from whom he is transiting in the eighth some care some seriousness are needed and one should be quite careful about it but a proper analysis see moon is the card of mother saturn transiting into eighth from moon can be bad for mother can give her health problems etc etc but this will only happen when the when the longevity of the mother should be properly checked and the fourth lord the fourth house should be very strongly checked if the fourth house fourth lord etc are in a good condition then saturn transiting in eighth from moon is only bad for mind mentality thinking etc so it should be accordingly understood and as per the techniques as per the three prime techniques the the condition of saturn in the natal horoscope the astrology of saturn and the yogas in the houses or the yogas from the house lord that should be properly judged if the third lord is exalted in the sixth house it is lord of one upchaya exalted in another house so any planet comes to the third house and activates it is not going to be bad but it is going to be good only because the third lord is making a good yoga planets as they come to the third house of the horoscope and activate the third house with the power that the planets carry should not be treated as bad but should be treated as good this saturn transiting in the eighth house is quite a content like a quite a contentful technique that you should think about when saturn is in the ascendant it is eighth house from the sixth house so saturn transiting over the ascendant is bad for the enemies bad for the disease right because it creates death and destruction to the sixth house so should it be completely taken back saturn transiting over moon or saturn transiting over ascendant is it very very bad the same will happen in the case where saturn goes to the third house and the saturn in the third house is considered as good good because it is eight house from the eighth house right so it destroys the melodic significations of the eighth house and then seventh house seventh house is eighth house from the twelfth house so when saturn transits the seventh house it is bad for the twelfth house it destroys the twelfth house that means the destruction of expenditure the destruction of losses and destruction of such bad things which is ultimately good Right, so this particular technique of Saturn being eight from a planet and Saturn being eight from a house gives destruction to that particular planet and house is the prime major technique that should be taken into consideration. And these three rules of yoga, astrology, varaga, and the condition of the planet in the natal chart should be essentially judged before predicting anything through astrology, and always be beware of unnecessary fears. that unnecessary fear that someone is trying to create always use your mind and intellect before believing anything question properly not question to the person question yourself question yourself right if someone is saying you that because of uh, your brother getting jealous of you you are not progressing sit ask you this can this happen someone thinking bad about me and because of that i cannot work i am having constant fights in my family etc etc i control my body my mouth or someone else does it question mind is the biggest asset that people have 
it is my sincere request to not get fooled and use astrology properly after understanding everything because astrology is a shastra that means a structured form of knowledge and is not a belief system or it is not an occult occult is something you know where you do a mysterious thing that leads to outcome that you don't know that astrology is not astrology is not occult it is not mysterious where how you reach the result cannot be found out it is not like looking into a looking into a crystal ball and telling this person is doing this that has no logic at all astrology is very statistical based on the nature and plan nature of planet it works like engineering and chemistry it is not occult at all it is a structured source of learning so learning properly and then using it properly will give you the truth this is all what i want to say thank you for watching this video and taking your time on namaste